Good evening, everyone. I apologize, I do not have my gavel tonight, so we're going to have to deal with this as we go. Thank you for coming to our regular board meeting this evening. It is 6.30 p.m., and I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order on Monday, May 22, 2017. If everyone could please turn their electronic devices to silent or vibrate, that would be greatly appreciated. And then if everyone could please, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. You may be seated. And Mr. Seymour, would you please call the roll? Mr. Birdie? Here. Dr. Johnson? Present. Mrs. Kinney? Here. Mrs. Ruckless? Present. Mrs. Moran? Present. We will now move into the first item on our agenda this evening, which is our district honors, recognitions, gifts, and introductions. Mr. Superintendent, you have the floor. All right, Madam President and Board, is Selena Stevenson here? All right. Yes. Okay, we'll circle back. She uh, was selected as a superintendent selection for the incredible artwork. Space Age. <laughs> Emma, Emma Bevins. Yes, Emma. She comes. Stay right here. Come back, Emma. <laughs> what grade are you in, Emma? Oh. I know you thought that was done by a 12th grader. No. Way to go, Emma. Aww. That was the principal selection. And then the honorable mentions is Riley Cotton, Ty Lynn Howard, and Thomas Loveless. Honorable mention. And these are all students that attend Primary North. The next group of students will be uh, honored from the elementary school. Uh, the superintendent selection is Naomi Stiggers. <laughs> Principal selection, Kalia Wilson. Chastity Sloba. Is Chastity here? And the, <laughs> the other honorable mention is Haley Hillingus. We have a representative here from the Kiwanis group.
Good evening. Uh, I'm Ann Akison and I'm president of the Green Hills Forest Park Kiwanis. And every month we award two special awards to students in the Winton Woods School District. And they are, I, we have, this is the Kiwanis Character Award um, that's given to an individual that uh, does outstanding work. And the uh, winner this month is Aiden Hillard. special award for you with your name on it. It says Perseverance. So, come on, we'll, we'll come in back here and have our picture taken. You want to hold it? So while he's taking his picture, I'll read a little bit about Aiden. And this is from Miss Tasha James and Miss Kinsira James. Aiden is the perfect example of a student that displays perseverance. Even though he may take his time with his work, he is always determined to complete his assignments and put forth 100% effort. Whenever he's faced with a challenging question or assignment, he always tries to complete the work himself before he asks for help. Aiden will even provide various answers to a question when he's unsure. Aiden is always cognizant of the assignments that he's responsible for completing. He does not have to be reminded to ever turn in work. He chooses to stay in from recess and to miss specials when it's necessary for him to get caught up in his work. We're proud to nominate Aiden Hillier for the Kiwanis Characters Key Award, Miss James and Miss James. And the next one is in conjunction uh, with Gold Star Chili and Zachariah Williams. Yep. These will be two awards simply because this is for April and May. And when young people um, have worked diligently all year, and for whatever reason they miss having the opportunity to have the award, we still track them down. Uh, we'll wait. We'll come back month after month after month. Zakira. Zakira. Okay. Yes. So, here's a little bit about Zakaira. It was a great pleasure to select Zakaira Williams as the Kiwanis Student of the Month. Zakaira is very determined, motivated, intelligent, caring, passionate young lady. I might add she is a great role model and leader in our community. I met Zakaira when she and her twin sister, Zakaya. <laughs> Is your twin sister here? No, sir. All right. Okay. You sure it's you? <laughs> <laughs> when I met her twin sister, near the end of freshman year, Sakaya inquired about joining the Academy of Global Studies. <coughs> she liked the idea of studying other cultures, working with others, public speaking, and travel. Entering AGS as a sophomore, Sakaya realized she had some required deficits, Global Center 9 in the first year foreign language. She created a plan to fulfill the requirements. It's through her experience in AGS that ignited her mission as to helping the special ed culture in our building. As a junior, Zakira stopped by my office to tell me she wanted to major in music therapy or teaching students with disabilities in college. She asked if she could work with our students in our MD class teaching them music. Zakira initiated conversations with Lisa Dye, a teacher in the multiple disabilities room. Soon Zakira was teaching the students holiday songs. The students in Mrs. Dye's, Dye's class practiced and performed at the holiday concert in December. Might I say there was not a dry eye during the performance. Zakaria's English teacher, Christine Woosley, wrote, Zakaria is a hardworking student who is passionate about sharing the joy of music with others. As a matter of fact, Zakaria has already been preparing for a senior capstone project. She and Ms. Woosley wrote a Donors Choose grant to get money to buy simple music instruments to teach and enable students in Mrs. Dyer's room for, to use. Zakaya's teacher has always shared with me that she is one of the most, the kindest, most thoughtful, and selfless students they know. She has demonstrated the willingness to care about others that is so rare for a high school student. Her teachers will agree that her respect for others, her politeness, and eagerness to learn 
radiates through the classroom. She is not afraid to take on new challenges. Zakiah's college resume will include being a recipient of the Community Service Action Committee. She is a member of Varsity Ensemble, the After School A Cappella Choir, and Soccer. Her hard work, ethic, intelligence, and compassion for all she encounters on a daily basis makes her so deserving for this honor. I'm excited to hear about the next chapter in her life. Whatever Sakaya chooses to do, the dedication she is to have as any task will bring about tremendous success. All these great words were written by her counselor, Kim Goins. Roderick Mincy. The great words written about Roderick were written by Brad Tash, the school counselor. I've had the pleasure of knowing Roderick Mincy for two years, and I can honestly say he has the most positive attitude of any student I've ever encountered. <clears throat> Not only does Roderick know just about every staff member in the building by name, but he always greets everyone he sees with a huge smile and a hug or a handshake. Roderick brightens the day of everyone he comes in contact with. Roderick has developed into a leader among his peers. He has performed very critical jobs around the school building, including recycling and getting ice for the nurse. Ice for the nurse. Hmm. That means there must be an injury somewhere. Maybe not much ice. He gets assistance with these jobs from some of his peers, but Roderick always takes on a leadership role. His peers are easily sidetracked and often have trouble completing a task, but Roderick is always willing to help them guide them through completing completing their duties, and demonstrates patience and professionalism while assisting them. Roderick's great work ethic and positive attitude have led him to obtaining gainful employment at a local restaurant. Wow, that's great. <laughs> he is currently the only one, one of the only, uh, one of his classmates who is currently holding a job. The whole school is very proud of Roderick's accomplishments and we will be sad to see him towards, move towards graduation. I'm confident he has a bright future ahead of him. Sincerely, Brad Tash, school counselor. Roger. Is there a representative here from Skyline? All right. Skyline Student Athlete of the Month, Isaac Boating. Is Isaac here tonight? Okay. We'll hold on it because we sometimes people come in. But I want to step back and uh, is Selena here? Does Selena come in? Selena is the superintendent selection of the artwork. She's a student at Primary South. Selena, what grade are you in? First grade. So we're going to do something a little different. With the artwork, I want, I, want, I want to pass it around so you guys get a chance to look at it closely and see the details of a first grader. Uh, you will be absolutely amazed. Selena, you want to say anything about the artwork? No. Great. <laughs> True artists. Okay. Skyline Teacher of the Month, Miss Nicole Sutherland. Is Miss Sutherland here? We'll bring her back next month. Okay. Congressional Art Competition Finalists. Now this is an absolutely incredible, phenomenal uh, event. 
Um, Isaac Sneed, Emily Trainer, these students were two of the 20 finalists for Representative Steve Shabbat's Congressional Art Competition. The Board of Education applauds them for earning this honor. Are they here tonight? If Isaac and Emily are here, you can go ahead and come up, please. Isaac Sneed or Emily Trainer. Incredible. I believe the artwork is still on display. Next is the Forest Park Environmental Art Contest. Woods would like to congratulate the following students who are winners in the contest. First place grand prize, Eliana Washam. A poster that was displayed in the Forest Park offices. Second place, group projects, Travis Ace, Antiqua Bell, Kalia Ingram, Zyshawn Johnson, Ashley Lewis, Cardi Moss, Bola Proto, Juwan Robinson, Kyra Stiggers, and James Veer Philpot. Special thanks goes to Ms. Rachel Reeser, Art and Residence, who assisted in the project. Third place, Jada Atkinson. All right, any of them present tonight? We can do a group picture. That would be really great. Okay. We and so, so this picture can look really good. I'll get in this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For those of you who thought the picture turned out better, we <laughs> Okay. Moving along. Manifest Gallery Student Project Best in Show. This is my mentee. I mentor this young man because I think he's absolutely incredible and very special. Wentwoods High School, Darian Hassard. Congratulations to Darian, who, ex who was accepted into the Manifest Gallery Student Project and will have his opening at the gallery the first week in June. He also won $250 from artists reaching classrooms or best show for Wentwoods High School. His artwork will hang in Save Our Schools art exhibit at the Cincinnati Art Academy in June. Wow. While Darian is slowly strolling back to his seat, um, I want to tell you a little bit about him and why I've selected him to uh, mentor. Uh, the band was going to be short a trombone player in the, in the fall. And Darian, who is an incredible trombone player, uh, agreed to work with the student after hours, before school, during lunch, in order so that we would have the right sound for our band. He did it in a very unselfish attitude because his thing is, you know, in order for me to give back, I have to make sure that I'm doing my part to go forward. So let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> Maddie Kelly. Is Maddie here? No? She's at work. All right. The Board of Education commends Maddie Kelly, whose art piece was chosen for the Student Arts Show at the Taft Museum and will be on display at the Taft Museum this summer. There was limited space, and out of 77 art considerations in the artists reaching classroom programs, programs, hers was one of the selected few chosen. So if you see Maddie, but we'll bring her back next week. <laughs> next month, excuse me. <laughs> Every year, uh, all, of the, all of the schools in Hamilton and Butler County, all the school districts, they celebrate excellence by choosing their Educator of the Year Award. 
And we are very, very proud that the Educator of the Year Award for Winton Woods City Schools was our well, incredible, spectacular, uh, innovator, Josh Amstad. Josh. Mr. Amstead, congratulations to Mr. Amstead, who was recognized at the Hamilton County Educational Foundation Celebration Excellence Breakfast on May 12 at the Sarenville Convention Center for his hard work, dedication, and outstanding contribution to provide educational support to students. In his 11th year, the purpose of this annual event is to recognize educators of the year from nearly every public school district in the Cincinnati area. Each individual school district submits its own top educator, and Josh was our overwhelming uh, favorite. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, you couldn't be there that, that morning, but Josh has already received his award, and uh, I think it was uh, two tickets to Paris. That would have been real great. Okay. <laughs> didn't happen. All right. But we wish that would have happened. That didn't happen. All right. It was pretty good, right, Josh? Yeah, it was great. All right. Okay. You want to say a little bit about your that double yeah yes yeah, sure. I'd love to love to uh, so, well, first off, I really appreciate the district for giving me this award because uh, obviously I have a lot more experience to have an education and getting such a prestigious award um, after only being with the district for five years was, was super humbling and just, I was overwhelmed with emotion when I got surprised in my classroom, let's just say that. Um, but uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about our district, and of course I love it, which is why I'm here, uh, so of course I'm going to talk about it in a great way, uh, is that I honestly am the teacher I am because of the district. The technology I know now, I talk to my friends in education, they have no clue about. The projects we're able to do with our students are things that college professors only wish they could do, coming straight <laughs> from the mouths of, of my mathematics professors when I got my master's in math last summer. Uh, and in addition, they allow us opportunities, so we created this physics aligned pre-calculus course uh, where we've combined physics and pre-calculus together, and as a result, we were actually done with our curriculum in March, so we've just been doing fun, awesome projects and problem solving uh, for the last two months to be able to give our students that real-world experience of engineering, in addition to be able to apply math and science in a meaningful way. So uh, really, I have to give it to our district for allowing me these opportunities, because without them, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So thank you. This next incredible um, motivator of young people, um, we, we've had the pleasure of having him with us this year. Um, I'm not sure if you know this, but um, I've got some highlight films where I, I dunked on this guy like three times <laughs> in one game. But I'd like to uh, bring up a special recognition for Mr. Melvin Levitt. <laughs> The Board of Education congratulates Mr. Levitt, who was honored by the University of Cincinnati recently for his outstanding contributions as a former member of the Bearcat team and inductee into the university's Athletic Hall of Fame. Mr. Levitt really didn't want us to know about this, so he tried to keep it um, real low. And then when my video came out, we had to recognize him that that was me dunking on it. Mr. Levitt, you want to tell a little bit about why you do what you do? Um, <laughs> a little nervous. Um, first wait, of all, wait, I just want to say. Before he starts, this is his team? Yep. Yeah. Stand up and be recognized. <laughs> now, before, before we put Mr. Coach Levitt on the spot, is he always this nice? No. Okay. All right. Just thought I'd check. As I told you when I seen you when you came in, I owe you. <laughs> no, um, first I just want to say uh, this is a, a great honor to be uh, recognized in this fashion. Um, I've spent some time in some places and didn't receive the recognition that I thought I should. Uh, but this is, this is totally overwhelming. I was shocked uh, and excited at the same time because I feel like ever since I got to this district, um, there's been exciting things transpiring and taking place for me. 
and I couldn't be happier to be here to share the space with such great educators and things like that. So again, I appreciate the opportunity. I do what I do because um, it was something that was put forth for me. Um, I had a great support system growing up of coaches, uh, parents, other people's parents, you know, grandparents and things like that, that kind of kept me in line along with teachers as well. And I just tried to take what I had uh, as far as my talents go and use those same blessings from the people that were around me to kind of make something of myself. And, and luckily, you know, God blessed me to go see some things that um, I couldn't pay to go see and I couldn't pay to learn. So now I feel like being in this uh, situation that I'm in, uh, the second half of my life, um, I feel like now is that opportunity for me to give back every opportunity that every person that has been in my life has given to me. So it's, it's enjoyable. Um, it's, it's something that I get a lot of joy out of. I'm excited about what I'm able to do and coming to school every day to be with third and fourth graders. Who can call that work? You know, that's like, I mean, that's unbelievable. Um, but again, I get a chance to introduce myself to a new generation of kid every single year, whether it's through basketball or through education. And that's what I'm, I'm really most excited about because the guy that he supposedly dunked on three times in one game, I'm no longer that guy. I'm, I'm Melvin Levitt, the educator, and I am very excited. Oh, yeah, I still got a little bit of that. Still got a little bit of that. But I am very excited to give people Melvin Levitt, the educator, uh, because I feel like that guy can, can really give a lot to communities and get a lot to young lives. So that's one of the good reasons why I do it. And again, I'm, I'm appreciative to have this opportunity to be here at Wynn Woods. Isaac texted me, said his mom is in the hospital. He won't make it. Okay. I coached Isaac in tennis. I also coach men's tennis um, and I do um, eighth grade boys basketball. So uh, Wynn Woods has really, 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 really put me to work and I am not complaining. So <laughs> thank you guys very much. So here are the few of the accomplishments of the helicopter. Started at UC from 1996 to 1999 as a shooting guard. Finished playing career at UC, ranked 25th all-time in scoring with 1,119 points. Ranks fourth in school history in three-point percentages with a .348. Three-point field goals made 164. Three-point field goals attempted 471. Was, a, was selected as Associated Press All-American Honorable Mention in 1998 and 1999. Second Team All-Conference USA in 1998 and 1999. Led UC to victory over number one ranked Blue, Duke Blue Devils in the Great Alaskan Shootout in 1998 with 25 points, including the game-winning dunk. <laughs> The Cleveland native was drafted by the Detroit Pistons in the second round, none of these work, in the second round of the 1999 NBA draft, inducted into the University of Cincinnati James P. Kelly Athletics Hall of Fame in 2009. Mr. Levitt, Coach Levitt, the helicopter says he is not that man, but I am. All right, so <laughs> congratulations, Coach. Incredible work. Okay, so we keep working diligently to create great kids, and kids come from great parents. So we believe that. So when I call these three uh, Incredible Extra Mile Parents Award, we're going to do something different. Uh, is Miss Dion Cage here? Where's your child? <laughs> I want you to say, tell us some great things of why your mom is receiving the Extra Mile Parent Award. Um, and it all better be true. <laughs> <laughs> well. I don't know. She does everything for the football team. This football team, this past year, I'm talking about fundraisers to provide money 
to like feed. We literally take in probably about half the kids on the football team just to feed them. Because sometimes like where where it was, and some of the kids don't go home and be able to eat. So she's like the mom to like half the team. So it's like oh, uh, like when we even go out to uh, when my brother used to play for the Winwoods. Uh, I remember times where, uh, well, I ain't gonna put no names out, but when um, kids used to come in and they used to stay with us for about two weeks, three weeks, just to like have a home to stay in. And she used to just feed just everybody. And she, <laughs> she just feed everybody. And it's like she would greet you with an open, with open arms and a big smile. And I mean, I can't ask for a better mom than that. So. Bravo. <laughs> tribute than to come from her own child. I think it's your diamond ring. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm a very simple person. <laughs> Miss Cindy yeah, Scram. Jordan, you want to come up and say a little bit about this incredible parent and about the uh, work they did with Cincinnati Reds to create that field of champions. Yes, the Schramm family have been involved in our district for a long time. Uh, their son Jack uh, plays baseball, and um, we were the uh, just the benefactors of just a, a wonderful connection that the Schramms have with the Cincinnati Reds. And because of that connection, our baseball field, was, which was in dire need of renovation, was completely renovated, and it's, it's now a class act for our team. So we really appreciate that. Um, Jackson, uh, in the music program as well. Uh, not this year. Okay. Yes, I know uh, Jack has been in the choir, I believe. He was in the choir and band. Yes. And um, the Shrams have, uh, we've seen them around the district uh, volunteering wherever um, they've been needed. And we just so appreciate their presence. And we hope that even though Jack will be graduating, uh, they will not. <laughs> so thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Jackie Mayer. Ms. Jordan, back to the mic. <laughs> I have the privilege of uh, knowing uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mayor as well as uh, their son, uh, who's also graduating, as this award goes to uh, the parents of the youngest graduating child from the district um, for above and beyond service to the district and the community. And uh, the mayors have also been a very visible presence around the district all these years. Uh, I know their son, he's a, an incredible musician. Um, and, uh, you know, thank you so much for all you and Mr. Mayor have done to support uh, just being willing to pitch in wherever uh, you've been needed. So thank you so much. Thank you. Our last recipient is the Community Spirit Award. And... Um, I have the pleasure of doing this, the state of the schools twice a year. And there is this really nice lady who um, usually asks about 50 questions every time I do it. Her questions are dynamic, they're inspirational, they're all about how do you make this district become a better one for young people to learn and for great teachers to teach. I like to um, say, Miss Baker. I think you're an incredible person, and keep the questions coming. So our recipient for the Community Spirit Award is Miss Betty Baker. Can I say something? Well, let me ask you.
ask you some questions now since you're up here. <laughs> no, Miss Baker. Yes, go ahead. No, it's your you're show. You're not going to ask me the no, questions. No, ma'am. You have all the answers anyway, so. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. I hate to tell you how many. Because I would have had to start before I was born. <laughs> If I wanted to be the age I would like to be, mm -hmm. I've been volunteering since 1970. Wow. I have been in every Green Hills Forest Park school. The one the least, I guess, just for special things, was the uh, old building over off of uh, Sharon Road, Cameron Park. And the others I spent time with. And most recently, I have been here at the high school. But one day, it dawned on me. We've got to start with the little people. So I went back to the first and second grade over at Primary North, and I hope I can be there again and again and again. So I've seen us grow. When I came out here, I don't know if you know, but the high school was on two shifts. And a house went on the market and it was gone by night. And there were kids everywhere. And I lived on a little cul-de-sac down in Green Hills, and I still do. And they said, there's about 60 kids down here. I didn't think it could be possible. But when it got evening, the children had taken their places in the cul-de-sac, the big ones were one place and the little ones were the other, and I don't think there was 60, but there were lots of children. So there have been lots of changes, and I hope that we will continue to have a good, good school system. And there's a lot to be said. I want to say this to cultivate good, good citizens. That is important, and I will hush. and recognitions uh, for tonight. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. At this time, we will take a recess. Congratulations to all our honored folks tonight, staff, community members, and students. We greatly appreciate you. We'll be back in five minutes. All right. So we will now resume our regular board meeting. And we have no public comments, board colleagues, so we will move right into item number five, which is the approval of minutes as presented. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the minutes as presented. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any further dis or any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Sure. Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Coon? Aye. Mrs. Ruglis? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously, and we will move on to 5.02, our fee schedule for next school year. Uh, yes, before you, you have the fee schedule uh, to approve for next year. The only change from last year is a $1 increase in the AP tests. And as you know, uh, of course, AP, free and reduced, will apply to that. But on the right-hand side of your fee schedule for participation to play, uh, free and reduced does not impact extracurricular activities. Those fees were not changed. And we're asking you to approve those for the next school year. Thank you, Mr. Seymour. 
Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the fee schedule for the 2017-18 school year as presented. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kuhn? Aye. Mrs. Ruggles? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And back to you, Mr. Seymour, for your treasurer's report. Our financial report uh, is coming near. We're getting closer to the end of the year. But for the uh, month of April, our year-to-date revenues in the general fund were $44 million with uh, month-to-date revenues of two point one, and we of course re received our final real estate payment and of course we are always receive our state foundation on our general fund expenditures we're running at forty point six it's nice to know that revenues are still exceeding expenditures at this point but we have two months to go through without any revenues but currently we're running around six percent under budget for approximately 3.6, so we're still on target as we were when we passed the forecast. Um, the current year-to-date activity for all funds, we have about 50 point, I'm so, I apologize, 85 million, of which 20 million is your general fund, 10.6 million in your facilities, and 50 point million in classroom construction. As you know, we have two funds to support the uh, building local funds because one is called LFI, your local support, and the other is segregated for matching state funds, and we haven't received any state funds yet for the project. Once we would receive them all, that's where we get to the $110 million. Mm -hmm. That's it for the financial report, unless you would have any questions. Yes, are there any questions or discussion for Mr. Seymour? All right, seeing none, we will let the financial statement for the month of April be submitted to audit, and then Mr. Seymour will move into your investment report. Fortunately for investments, we showed a positive this month, and on our $88 million, we received $56 million, $56,000. Oh, oh, I almost had a stroke. <laughs> In interest. Steve wishes it were a million, but it was not. I saw his eyes get big. Um, it was yeah, 56 man. 56000 on our investments for the month. Thank you. Board of motion would be in order for item number seven. <clears throat> Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the investment report as presented. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kuhn? Aye. Mrs. Ruggles? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And then, Mr. Superintendent, we will turn to you for 8.01. Yes, Madam President of the Board. Um, there are two major pieces. There are a lot of events taking place, but there are two major events. Number one, uh, this is the, um, the saddest part about being a superintendent. The last day of school is May 25th. All right. So I usually sit in my office and tear up for about an hour, and then I go on with the rest of my work. And then the other thing that brings me, that revives me, Mrs. Coon, I know you wonder, what brings you back out of that slump, Superintendent? Graduation for our seniors is May 25th at CentOS Center. So we will be very, very excited with both of those uh, big events. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. Any questions for Superintendent before we move on? Okay, 8.02, Mr. Superintendent. Yes, 8.02. In order for us to be a more efficient school district, we've made a revision to policy 4120, classified staff, employment and of classified staff. And this is your first read to the board and president. <coughs> um, if you have your document with you, I'd like for you to um, look for a important section. It's a yellow section on the uh, back side of the document. It reads, the employment of classified staff members prior to approval by the board is authorized when their employment is required to maintain continuity in district <coughs> operations and proper verification is ver proper verification, proper certification is verified, excuse me. Employment shall be recommended to the board at the next regular meeting. The purpose of this particular <coughs> uh, insert is to make sure that in the event that we have a student let's say a student with uh, disabilities who has an IEP, who must have that proper um, support service in order for the IEP to be update and accurate. We may need to uh, have the board approve that process <laughs> later, 
But keep in mind, the person would have already had their certification, would already be vetted with the Ohio Department of Education. This is just a precaution to make sure that we're in compliance uh, because we could actually have a uh, situation where a kid <coughs> needs services uh, the day after the board meeting, which means we couldn't delay that service. So that would be something that we would ask to uh, continue to be with 4120. It was always there, but we wanted to make sure that we highlighted it. And then the other piece is... Okay, I'm sorry. But we want to make sure that that's an insert because it's very important that we keep our flow and continuity to make sure students are receiving the services. So we do need that uh, board to consider that when you're reading it for the first time. And then the other piece is no candidate for employment as a classified staff member shall receive recommendation for such employment without having preferred visual evidence of proper certification. This can't be a phone call. It can't be anything. It has to be an actual document that comes from the Ohio Department of Education that says the person has proper certification to do the job that they are uh, hired to do. So the other piece is... Uh, there's one other piece that I think the board needs to uh, review. 3319.088 was never inserted in this document, so it is inserted in this document, which is in alignment with Ohio Revised Code. So that one was is highlighted in red in your notes. And the last revision, of course, is May 22nd, uh, 2017. Thank you, Superintendent Smith. Board, is there any questions, comments? I just on have this one item. question. So we're reading it tonight, May the twenty second, but we're going to vote on it in the next meeting in June. We, I wanted you, I wanted the board to have some time to look at it and to make sure that it met all of your recommendations and considerations for employment, uh, just to make sure that uh, it, our timeline was sufficient with yours. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Superintendent, we'll move into item nine point zero one. Yes, Madam President and Board, it is the recommendation to approve the personnel schedules as presented. Schedule A, resignations and retirements. Schedule B, certificated staff. Schedule C, support staff. Schedule D, extra duty and supplemental employment. Schedule E, leaves. And finally, Schedule L, death of an employee. Board. I'd like to um, make a motion to approve the personnel schedules as presented. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Burton? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kidd? Aye. Mrs. Rutgers? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> and, Superintendent, we move to 9.02. Yes, 9.02, exempted employee salary schedule and step placement. The recommendation is to approve the exempt employee salary schedule effective July 1, 2017 and the step placement for all exempt employees effective July 1, 2017 as well. Madam President, I'll make a motion to approve the exempt employee salary schedule effective July 1, 2017 and the step placement of all exempt employees effective July 1, 2017. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Burton? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Ken? Aye. Mrs. Rogles? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And 9.03, Superintendent Smith. 9.03, Administrative Contract Salaries Effective August 1, 2017. The recommendation, Madam President and Board, is to approve certificated, certified, and classified administrative contract salaries effective August 1, 2017, as presented. Board colleagues, a motion would be in order for this item. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the certified and classified administrative contract salaries effective August 1st, 2017, as presented. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that <coughs> vote, sir? Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kuhn? Aye. Mrs. Ruglis? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And back to you, Superintendent, for 9.04. 
subject is the addendum to administrative and exempt salary schedules. The recommendation is to approve the addendum to the administrative and exempt salary schedules as presented. The addendum has been updated effective July 1st, uh, 2017 to reflect the new severance agreement with the elimination of the retirement incentive. Board colleagues, a motion would be in order. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the addendum to the administrative and exempt salary schedules as presented. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, <coughs> would you please call that vote? Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kim? Aye. Mrs. Ruglis? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. 9.05. <coughs> yes, Madam President and Board. Uh, the recommendation is to approve the substitute salary schedule effective July 1st, 2017, as presented. Ready? Mm -hmm. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the substitute salary schedule effective July the 1st, 2017, as presented. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kinnon? Aye. Mrs. Ruglis? Aye. Mrs. Moran? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And Superintendent, your last one, 9.06, please. 9.06. Madam President and Board, the recommendation is to approve the new courses for the 2017-18 <coughs> school year as presented. But before the uh, Board votes on the new courses, I would like to have our Teaching and Learning Director, Dr. Holden, come up to talk about website development, not in detail, but just why those courses are being offered. I think it's very important for people to know why we're making a shift to offer courses that we didn't have before. Uh, computer graphics, computer multimedia literacy, and intro to public speaking. Dr. Holden. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, these courses are part of our move um, to align ourselves more fully with what we offer with new tech in terms of the technology and also to begin to work with um, local colleges and universities in, in particular the University of Cincinnati um, and perhaps uh, Cincinnati State and Miami in terms of offering a technology um, kind of a sequence a, a logical sequence of courses uh, for students um, and this is um, these courses will fill um, because they're connected to what uh, the students do. So um, the <coughs> digital media um, will help students as they work on their projects. And then um, I know there are three of them, but they the titles escaped me because I've been talking about them and I can't even pull them out of my, my head. But um, all of them are um, designed to really support the work that students are doing in other classes. And I know the, the hope is that for the digital media one, um, the instructor will align the work there um, with the work that students are doing in their other classes. So there's a, this looping connection, um, and the students can see how the technology flows through. But it certainly is um, our effort and the effort of Mr. Martin, who's worked hard on this, to really start bringing to life some um, technology courses at the high school. So these are credited electives? Yes. Do they fall under the elective? They're electives, right. Are they semester classes or are they full year? Um, semester, okay. I believe. I apologize because I came unprepared and do not have, no, it, well, have it in just, front of sorry, me. Sorry, I just... <laughs> they're semester. Yeah, they're semester. semester. I, I, typically, I thought, they're semester yeah, courses. I thought they I just wanted to compare. And I want to correct that she is always prepared. <laughs> she is, I, I was just a little surprised. Yeah. But anyway, um, and, and this also, if I'm... This will help CCP, right? Right. I mean, some of the this is in our in our efforts to provide CCP courses, but this will also help students as the state kind of transitions from the honors diploma model that they have now mm -hmm. to different pathways, and these courses will will fall into one of those pathways. Right. Mm -hmm. and so it's another a, opportunity for students. And just as a point of order, before we ask too many questions, can we first get the motion on the floor? <laughs> Sorry, I was too fast. <laughs> Thank Madam you. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the new courses for the school year 2017-18 as presented. Second. 
It's been motioned and seconded. Now, are there any further questions or discussion for Dr. Holden? I just wanted to just say that I was very excited about our opportunities for our students. So that those are you can feel mm -hmm. the energy from the mm -hmm. from the board that we're excited <coughs> about these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and just to say them out loud, because I love them so much, we're talking about website mm -hmm. development, computer graphics, mm -hmm. computer multimedia literacy, and my personal favorite, intro to public speaking. Mm -hmm. So That's kudos yeah. to the we team. We found out, Madam President, we found that there were some young people who were real intentional about projects. Mm -hmm. Their projects turned out well but they had some difficulty articulating the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to make sure that our kids are well-rounded, we want to make sure that they go mm -hmm. collectively hand-in-hand. Hand. Yeah. So that was the other advantage of mm -hmm. having the intro to public speaking. Mm -hmm. Great. I, too, think that the, the intro to public speaking is very um, important, especially as we look at the new tech network and mm -hmm. all the projects that they have to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, um, do we do anything at the lower levels that give them that introduction? Or even if we don't have it right now, is there a plan to try and get them ready for the number of projects that they're going to have to do at the high school? You know, that's an, that's an excellent question. Certainly right now, if we do anything, it's informal rather than formal. Um, I think doing that will really have an impact on whether we need a public speaking course at the yeah. middle school level. Yeah. Um, but right now, the way I've seen it, particularly when I was at a presentation at one of the primaries last week, was that the teacher, in kind of coaching up the students on presenting their project, because it's all foreign to them, really worked with them on, you know, look at your audience, speak clearly. Um, so they do that right now informally, but that's a that's a good point, Mrs. Ruggles. One thing I've noticed about um, young people in our district, um, because I've been to other places, they are usually not shy about standing up and giving an overview. Uh, and I think that that's a testament to what they've been put in front of. Uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Birdie says often, uh, kids will rise to the occasion. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask one question? Um, I think I heard you say, and I just want to clarify, mm -hmm. that you were working, is it articulation agreements with the colleges, or is it just to circle it around to College Credit Plus? It, it? it depends. Okay. And it, and so it really depends on, on the instructor and the qualifications of, of the, the instructor. instructor. That's correct. So it could be either or both. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the point I was trying to make. The instructor that we hired mm -hmm. actually teaches at the college level. So okay. Right. One of the things that we didn't want to, to happen is um, a student is interested in College Credit Plus, mm -hmm. but there's a transportation issue. Right. So if we can bring the college to you, we right. will definitely do that. Right. Yes. And as long as they have the same, the right credentials they will for have the college, to, yes. and, and that doesn't mess with any of the Board of Regents requirements. As you know, the Board of Regents has right. to approve that. That's exactly right. That. It's not, exactly we right. don't control yeah. that. Right. Even if they have what we would call appropriate licensure, sure. that's irrelevant right. to the Board of Regents, right. so they have their own process. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. That is really a great thing. So. Very good. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Dr. Holden. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Sure. Mr. Birdie? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kennan? Aye. Mrs. Rogles? Aye. Mrs. Miranda? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. And we will move into my legislative report for this evening. And board colleagues and Superintendent Smith and Treasurer Seymour, you have a handout in front of you entitled Legislative Report from me. Just a couple things I put together from some publications that have probably already been sent to you in electronic format via email. One is Senate Bill 8, um, which passed the Senate by a swoop a 33 to nothing vote. Um, the legislation would require the Ohio School Facilities Commission, who is our current partner in our new facilities, um, to establish a program assisting school districts in purchasing technology and making physical alterations to improve technology infrastructure and school safety and security, which I thought was mm -hmm. great news for our project that we currently are working on at this time. Um, the bill is heading to the House for consideration, but hopefully the House will approve it just as overwhelmingly as the Senate did here in Ohio. 
Um, also, there is a House Government Accountability and Oversight Committee um, talking about and looking at testimony regarding a bill that would provide procedures for returning funds um, to public schools when those state funds are returned as a result of an audit finding against a community and or a charter school. So I thought this is something very interesting to keep an eye on as well. Um, and there's a couple other things on here that I've sent you an email for at least one of them already today. Um, OSBA is looking for moderators for their conference workshops coming up this November. So if anyone's interested, the contact information is there. And then our Urban District Network summer meeting is coming up on July 11th, so I hope you can join me. So please let me know if you can, that way I can RSVP up to OSBA. <clears throat> And then that would conclude my legislative report. And Mr. Birdie, we will turn to you for the Great Oaks report. Um, and I have put a packet in front of each of you. It should be under Jessica's legislative report. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight in here was an email that Mr. Snyder sent out to uh, all the Great Oaks board members um, concerning com commencement ceremonies for all the, the four different schools within the Great Oaks. And he highlighted two Winton Woods students who actually addressed the, the student body at those commitments, commencement ceremonies, and I believe there were actually a couple other uh, Wentonwood students that also addressed uh, the student body at those commencement ceremonies, so I think that's pretty pretty exciting. Um, and then you've also got some, some students in the spotlight uh, information behind that, and some facts in a flash, which is some legislative information that the Great Oaks also uh, distributed to its board members. So, And I won't read any of that to you. I'll let you look at that at your leisure. Thank you, Mr. Birdie. <clears throat> okay, now we will move into our board um, comments, seeing as there's no board motions or recommendations. So 12.01 is where we are, and Mrs. Ruglis will start from you. Any comments from you, Mrs. Ruglis? Um, I'd just like to um, say that I think that this has been a fabulous year. I've learned a lot, you know, second year on the board. Um, and I'm excited about um, moving um, into getting involved in other things um, to help support the mission. Um, I wanted to say thank you to the teachers and administrators. I recognize that we took on a huge undertaking with um, the implementation of New Tech Network that um, was a hard, was a heavy lift, and um, seems like everyone is on board, and to the staff. Um, who are working to positively influence our culture and improve it and make um, this a destination district. Um, I'm very, very um, I'm proud of you and looking forward to um, getting busy and working and keeping the move, it up, move us forward um, next year. Thank you, Mrs. Ruggles. Mrs. Kuhn? Um, I would like to echo many of the similar sentiments um, I want to congratulate the class of 2017 um, and their hard work, their many, many years of dedication and hours uh, committed. I wish them much good luck and good fortune in the future and, and congratulate their families too. Um, and, and I didn't want to stop there too. I did want to congratulate all of our students, our teachers, staff, and administrators for their very hard work each and every year. It's most appreciative the board does recognize it and does want to acknowledge that hard work. And we want to be right in there with you to make your job easier, more effective, more efficient, and provide the solutions for our, ch our children. Um, and then we want you to go be rested and come back and get ready for an even higher, more progressive year next year. Um, I want to encourage all of our students through the summer, please read, learn, keep learning, don't stop, learn all the time. And then I, I do want to thank that... Um, our generous group of citizens that um, the group that puts the ribbons out for our seniors for the graduating they again they never fail they just pop up there they just mm -hmm. miraculously appear um, there every year and they it just shows the commitment from our community it's just one example of many and we want to grow that uh, partnership with our community uh, to touch every single uh, person that lives here so that's very exciting uh, to have that partnership and I think we'll continue to see it grow and prosper Thank you, Mrs. Kuhn. Dr. Johnson? Yeah, you know, just the, kind of the same sentiments, but I won't go into detail. I don't think you can say thank you enough. I mean, you know, sometimes people don't hear it and they feel unappreciative, but thank you again to the teachers, administrators, and staff. As the school year comes to a close, it's just nice to know that you are appreciated for what you do for our students and for our district. 
Um, also, uh, to thank all the people who pour into the community. We um, honored some today, but every um, every board meeting we honor um, or recognize some community uh, members. And so just to say thank you to them as well. Uh, today, the 22nd through the 25th, just to remind parents that there are exams going on and students need to get some rest. I'm a teacher, so I got to think of those things. I'm sorry. Yeah, get get some rest. There's early release, so you get the times vary according to what school your uh, student is in. So um, pay close attention to that. You got some younger ones. Make sure you got some arrangements made. Um, uh, but just check the check the website again. Mr. Smith said that the commencements at. Um, at the CentOS Center at 7.30 on um, the 25th. Um, June the 2nd, report cards are going to be mailed out, so keep your eye on that. Um, they'll be coming in the mail. Uh, and summer school starts June the 1st, I believe. Um, so, um, you know, these are things that teachers pay attention to, probably not anybody else, right? So um, we want you to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, June the 3rd, we're going to have some SAT uh, test going on here at the school. And also there's something fun happening here at the school, um, the uh, Winton Woods Alumni Basketball Tournament. So that's going to be exciting for people who are just looking for something to do uh, after uh, school is out. Uh, we do have OGT prep. This is probably the last time we'll have OGT prep. Um, so OGD prep from June the 5th to the 12th. Um, and there's also going to be college at boot camp. You want to pay attention and do that. And I think summer school for everybody starts on that day, too, for June the, June the 5th. And the last thing I want to mention is that we will have the free lunch, breakfast, and lunch program at, I think it's at the middle school, or no, intermediate, intermediate. school. Mm -hmm. Intermediate school, okay. So at the intermediate school, and the breakfast is from 8 to 9, and the lunch mm -hmm. is from 12.15 to 1 at the intermediate school. They're always welcoming volunteers, so if you want to come and help mm -hmm. volunteer pass out the meals, or if you want to come and get a meal, 18 and under, um, uh, children 18 and under are welcome to come Monday through Friday from June the 5th through July the 28th. And if you have any questions or you want to check out all this, a lot of information, just go to our website and check it out. But um, just keep those things in mind and um, have a safe summer. You know, school will be out before we meet again. So have a safe summer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Mr. Birdie? Uh, we all had the opportunity to uh, attend an honors diploma scholars dinner last week um, and saw the results of all the hard work the teachers and the staff and and the students have have performed over this last year and it was uh, it, it was exciting to see students who have chosen you know chemistry and going into pre-med and nursing mechanical engineering um, chemical engineering and my favorite accounting <laughs> um, and then to see the places that, that they're also going, it'd be at Johns Hopkins University, uh, you know, even Mount St. Joe's, the Ohio State University, Xavier. Um, our students are, are, are going to be out there for the world to see, and this is, this is exciting for us as a board, I think, and as for the uh, staff and administration of the school district. also want to thank all the local organizations that, uh, that provided scholarships to these students during that uh, that award ceremony that's uh, that's vital to helping these these children uh, succeed in the future um, and then also just want to put out my heartfelt thoughts and prayers to Caleb Simpson's family yes. on his passing yes thank you thank you Mr. Birdie um, thank you board colleagues and especially Dr. Johnson for pointing out all those dates saved me a lot of breath <laughs> so thank you um, I do just want to mention a quick shout out to some people in our community um, who have been honored before um, but it's only appropriate now to recognize them again as there's a change in leadership in their organization um, so everyone knows of our homework club over on Hanover and Waycross the Latino ministry that runs that um, senior Carlos and his wife Glinda de Jesus are finally having a true retirement so congratulations to them and there's going to be new le leadership that's already there um, in Reverend Maggie Foote so we look forward to that continued partnership and want to wish them the best um, congratulations to all of our wonderful students graduating on Thursday um, probably the same as my colleagues here it's one of my favorite events in May other than the scholars dinner it's so exciting to get to hand and 
hand the diplomas and shake the hands of all of our young leaders. It's very, very nourishing. So congratulations to all of you and to your families and for all your hard work. Um, I want to make a quick shout out in my traditional style to elementary school and primary south for all of the awesome events that are happening. One was this morning at um, primary south. Um, Principal Wallace did something a little different for the second graders and had a really cool showcase this morning where they got to walk down the runway and strut their stuff and get their awards from their teachers. So it was very, very special, very cute. I appreciated that. Um, and again, for parents, just remember the early release the next three days. I know some of my children walk to school, so that's very important, especially for our walkers, for the early release. And um, also thank you to the staff at the elementary school for all of the summer nourishing programs that's happening this summer, especially the Magis Club. Um, I think that's a great addition, and I look forward to my daughter going to the Magis Club and all the other students as well. Um, so thanks again for that. And I will close with that as we... I don't think we have a representative from either union, right? Okay, so with that said we do have a need for an executive session this evening so we'll entertain a motion for that oh yes superintendent do you have some comments yes a uh, very important event is going to be taking place very soon um, I'm sure you guys are aware that over the past few years Mr. Denny has orchestrated and worked diligently on this cost savings day the uh, cost savings day so that people in the community understand that uh, for the most part schools will be closed on Friday but the employees are working 10-hour days mm -hmm. uh, so that's a the trade-off and um, one of the things that I can say about the commitment of the work usually you would have an initiative like this and people may not do it or do it I think that this this is a, a real serious testimony of the hard work and dedication that you have of the employees of Wentwood City Schools that everybody contributes and they do their part and we actually save energy, uh, conserve energy, and save money at the same time. So, Mr. Denny, thank you for the initiative. Thank you for the plan. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for all the attributes that you have given the district. The other thing is um, I think it's very important and very fitting that we recognize our employees for their work, their commitment to our work, and uh, for uh, Ms. Wilson for hiring the right people at the right time to make sure that project-based learning goes underway without having any kind of drawbacks, and also for Dr. Holden for putting us on the right track of the professional development. You know, you could have all these great initiatives but without the right people, without the PD, it goes to waste. So thank you to my colleagues for their uh, undying work to the commitment to Wentwood City Schools. And finally, to um, my colleague across the way, for Mr. Mr. Seymour, thank you for everything, for an incredible year. Uh, thank you for keeping me under budget, even though I keep trying to um, <laughs> hire other people, as you say. Not and easy. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're thinking about moving our offices next door to each other so we can actually be more soul mates in the, in the work. <laughs> I can see you now. I didn't know that that's where my window was. Now that I know, I open my blinds every morning and he's standing there. So uh, we greet each other with a smile. But he knows I'm coming around the corner any minute now. But it is a tribute working with uh, a person who believes in uh, uh, how we really fund our district and also keeping us within the, the confines of what it means to use taxpayers' dollars in the most efficient manner. And then finally, she is not here, but um, our technology work that we're really surrounding ourselves with uh, also with our community engagement coordinator, our technology coordinator, and uh, we're transitioning our special ed, uh, our uh, student services manager. But I think we're in good spirit because we've been getting ready for that transition for several years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that the board really has to rely on the structure of our system to create a level of sustainability. If one person transitioned, is there another person to take their place? Mm -hmm. So kudos to the team, to their hard work, to all of their imagination and great work. And uh, we look forward to having a more uh, illustrious year for 1718. Thank you, Superintendent. Treasurer Seymour, any comments from you? No. Okay, you. you're welcome. Okay. You don't want to say anything about me? <laughs> it would all be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right now we will entertain a motion to go into a closed session. Madam President, I'd like to make a motion for executive um, 
session for legal matters. I'll second. It's been motioned and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Seymour, would you please call that vote? Mr. Brady? Aye. Dr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Kent? Aye. Mrs. Ruggles? Aye. Mrs. Miller? Aye. Motion passes, and we will now move into closed session. For our partners at Waycross, we will not have any further business after executive session. Thank you. We're going to stay here. We have a room. We, we have, have a room to go to. Oh, we have time to break down. Yeah, okay. They, they don't have